All right, pirates, welcome. Today we are going to talk about uh, types of heat transfer. Uh, three main types, or three types. Um, let's get right into it. We're looking at the notes here. We have conduction, convection, radiation. We'll break those down. We'll give some examples. Fairly straightforward topic, uh, understanding that there can be more than one type of heat transfer present at a time. Uh, and we'll talk about an application of this uh, and how it pertains to us in our daily hydration routines. Um, so, uh, conduction. Let's talk the first one. Heat transfer through direct contact. Okay, so in this picture we have uh, the person grabbing the handle of the pot. Now, your pots and pans at home uh, may or may not have some type of handle uh, that is something other than metal. Okay, metal is a good conductor of heat. The handle uh, most likely is plastic. Maybe it's wood, um, but there's a good chance uh, it's not metal. You do have pots and pans that are just pure metal, uh, but those you're gonna have to have a oven mitt or a towel or a pot holder uh, in order to grab that, or else you're gonna burn yourself uh, on a daily basis. Um, also in this picture, conduction, okay? The only uh, hot part uh, of the fire is right here, but that heat is traveling up uh, that metal poker. Now, the way it's doing it, it's direct contact that it touches one molecule, then the next molecule, the next molecule, the next molecule, all the way up till it gets to your hand, and the end of that will be hot. Uh, you may have noticed same thing that if you leave a spoon um, in a pot or a pan, once well, cooking a metal spoon, uh, the handle of the spoon will be hot, uh, even though the handle of the spoon wasn't in. Uh, the water or the flame or whatever you're dealing with, okay? So that's through direct contact. And again, uh, last thing you can see here, again, you need direct contact uh, for this conduction to happen, okay? You actually need to touch it. A, you need to touch that pot uh, in order to burn your hand, and B, uh, this pot needs to be sitting on that heat, and that heat starts here, and it works its way up the metal, and it continues to work its way this way. So even though there is no direct flame underneath that handle or direct heating element, flame, um, whether there's flame, uh, 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 electric stove top, whatever it may be, there's no heating element directly underneath it. But even way here at the end, if it's metal, it still will get hot. Okay, so there's conduction, okay, heating by direct contact. Next up, I'm going to clear this page. We'll get back into it. Okay, next up we have convection. All right, so now we're heating of moving particles uh, in a fluid. Now, the term fluid, uh, the term fluid can be actually considered a gas or a liquid. Okay, uh, gases and liquids do have some similar characteristics. Uh, they act in some of the same ways. And one of the ways, a term you have heard, is that uh, hot air rises. Okay, uh, I used to live in a, uh, a condo, uh, an apartment for a long time, and I was on the third floor of a three-story building. Okay, uh, during the winter, I was very happy, okay, because everyone else heated my apartment. Okay, the hot air would rise up. During the summer, I had extremely high electric bills because I had to cool my apartment that was at the very top, and it would go all the way down to the bottom, okay? If you live in a uh, single family home that happens to have a basement, during the summer you love the basement because the basement is cool. Or if you go to the storage room of your apartment building, it's gonna be cool down there if it's in the lower level of the apartment building, which they normally are. Um, and let's say you live uh, in a single family home with multiple floors and your bedroom is on the top floor, your bedroom is probably hot during the summer, okay? Because warm air rises. All right, uh, so when we talk about convection, here are the convection currents and here are the notes uh, that go along with it. And here's what's happening in this pot is that you have this heating element, okay? Uh, the warm water is gonna rise to the top and as it rises to the top, it cools and then drops back down to the bottom. And then it warms again and it rises to the top. Same thing's happening in this cloud, okay? You have warm air rising up, uh, the earth's surface is heating the air and it's rising and as it goes up it cools and then that cool air drops back down and it cycles back through. Uh, so for these notes it talks about 
okay? Uh, air or water, warm air rising, bring heat with it. Uh, it rises to the top and the cool water rise, it goes to the bottom. So if you're swimming in a pool, if you go down to the bottom of the pool, um, you're gonna have the cool water down at the bottom of the pool and the warm water's at the top of the pool because the warm water is gonna rise, the cool water is gonna drop, okay? Um, when we look at radiation, okay? Let's talk radiation, let's clear this off. Okay, so radiation, that is through an open space. And there is one um, small application of this that we do actually use on a daily basis. And I'll give you the note uh, down here. And uh, that small thing we use is the sun. Okay, the sun heats us through radiation. Okay, space is a vacuum. There are no particles to heat going through space. So what the sun has to do, it has to heat through an open space, okay? Uh, some of you may uh, have a fire pit in the backyard or maybe you have a fireplace in your home or maybe you have a space heater um, or maybe you work at McDonald's and there are heat lamps that keep the food warm, okay? Uh, that is radiation, those big red bulbs and they shine down and they shine their heat, they're not touching the food, but they keep the food warm, okay? Or if you're a waiter or a waitress and they put the food up on the little serving shelf and they ring the bell and they say, come grab your food, the food's ready, and then the waiter or waitress grabs the food and brings it to the tables uh, and they're sitting under a heat lamp, okay? Now, uh, these notes were made a few years ago and it talks about a thermos or a vacuum flask. Let's talk about uh, something called a Yeti, okay? If you have never heard of a Yeti, or maybe Hydro Flask, okay? Um, I think Hydro Flasks are sold at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, but uh, a Yeti, okay? A Yeti is a, a cup or a koozie or a cooler, uh, and they cost uh, hundreds of dollars, okay, for the cups, $20, $30, whatever, but for the coolers, and we'll get into their coolers, they do actually have a vacuum cooler, um, but here's how they work, here is a vacuum flask, so when I talk vacuum flask, you can say hydro flask, or you can just say our friend the Yeti, Yeti is basically the apple of uh, uh, koozies and cups and coolers, um, it, it, it's, it's great marketing. You're paying a lot of money for marketing. It's a good product. How does it work? Well, the only thing it does is you have uh, an inner container, okay? Yetis use metal, okay? They're stainless steel. That way they won't break. Um, in this example, uh, the thermos is glass uh, and it's silver coated. It reflects the radiation, okay? Reflects that light to come in. Um, you notice that the Yetis are not see-through. They're not made of glass. Uh, that's to protect the radiation uh, from getting through. Uh, so you have the stainless steel, and then you have another um, outside layer, okay? Again, that's where you get all your pretty colors for the Yetis. And then the really, really, really important part is this right here, okay? And what that is, that is the vacuum. That's nothing. There is nothing in there. There is no air. There is no water. There is no metal. There is no glass. There is nothing. This is the most important part of it, okay? <clears throat> uh, there are some videos that they cut open Yetis, and we'll put some pictures on here, um, and there's nothing in there, okay? And actually, they can do it where the only thing touching is basically right here and right here, okay? So uh, if you have a vacuum... If you have a vacuum, well, then you will not have conduction, okay? And if it's blocking the radiation, okay, so either you have a silvered lining on the inside or you have stainless steel to block that radiation from coming in or out, um, you won't have radiation. And then convection, okay, well, if in here, if in this flask uh, you had warm liquid coming up, well, if this is insulated also and no heat can escape, and whether you have cold in there or hot in there, it's the same thing. It's just a heat transfer. Um, <clears throat> but if that's blocking heat from getting in or out, this will stay hot or cold uh, for a very long time. 
okay? Um, and anyone who's ever had a Yeti or used a Yeti cup, uh, now Yeti cups are a little bit different because if I had a Yeti cup, uh, I'm going to have an open top, okay? So I have a lot more contact with the air, and the air may be hot or the air may be cool, so I'm going to have contact. So it's going to heat up or cool down a lot faster. But if I had a hydro flask and I cover that top of it, it's going to stay hot or cold uh, for an extremely long period of time, okay? Um, so again, there are my three types of heat transfer. Uh, like I said, pretty straightforward. You have conduction. Uh, which is direct contact, direct contact. You have convection, uh, which is the movement, uh, the motion of molecules, okay? Warm air, warm water rising, cool air, cool water uh, going down. And then you have radiation, okay? And that's the uh, transfer uh, through an open space, okay? So if we just take one more note on here, we would say open space. All right. Um, and that's the sun. That's the main one. Or heat lamps, okay? Or uh, some certain types of space heaters uh, in a house, okay? Um, and that's how that works. Three main types of heat transfer.